That's easy for you to say. This is Daisy, this is Gunther, this is their roadmap to success. Um, so basically we spend most of the time working on Gunther. Um, Gunther's a nervous dog. Yes, you're a little bit nervous. Um, and I think a lot of it is, is uh, like a lot of my clients, the guardians had been doing some things that kind of confused the dog into where, where his position was. Yawn. Um, so if he yawns, you can pet him and use passive training and teach him to yawn on command. Um, but basically, um, I, he didn't really have a lot of rules. He gets more exercise than like 95% of my clients. So his exercise, I think, is good. I recommended uh, using a laser. Uh, his, he seems to be pretty healthy in terms of how he likes using la uh, chasing laser. Let's not go up there, sweetheart. Um, and uh, uh, some dogs, they get manic. You shouldn't use a laser for them. Okay. Um, the other thing is we have kind of a split level staircase. The guardians can actually toss a treat down the stairs, let the dog go down and, and lick it up. When he licks it up, come up with a word that means to go downstairs. Maybe you call it basement or, you know, parking or whatever, you know. Come up with something funny. Remember to use funny command words. One word commands, that should be a unique word that doesn't sound like other words you use a lot. So toss a treat down, he goes down and gets it. Maybe we say, uh, maybe we have a business downstairs. We call it going downstairs business and going upstairs pleasure. So he goes downstairs, licks it up, we say business. And then we call him back up and we give him a treat and say pleasure. And then drop another one down, he goes in and he gets it. After a while, and I would count each up down as one. And then basically, you know, he might need throughout the day, uh, ten, you know, three practices of 10 up downs. Or if we're gonna have some guests come over, practice a whole, get the dogs, I talk a lot about putting dogs in positions to succeed, getting him a lot of exercise before the guests come over, just make sure he has enough time to recover so he's not breathing heavy. Yes, such a cute. Um, okay, so uh, upping his exercise a little bit before guests come over or before things are going on, before the neighbors have a, uh, you know, a, a quinceanera in their backyard or whatever it is, can help him feel better uh, and, and put him in positions to succeed. Thanks for the kiss, buddy. Um, okay, so um, we also went over the importance, uh, didn't have any rules, and I think the guardians were petting him at times when he was nervous and anxious, and that will amplify whatever your dog is doing. So if a dog jumps up on you, you pet it, you're training it to jump up. If you pet it when it's scared, it's going to be more scared. If you pet it when it's stressed out, you're going to make more stressed. So to help the guardians go over that, I went over uh, uh, what I call petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with purpose is if the dog is asking or initiating contact, asking for attention, we give it a counter order, tell it to sit, pet it under its chin, and say the word sit. Try to avoid saying go sit, you know, good this, bad that. Just say just the command word. Um, also try to use just the same version of the command word, not come, come here, over here, here boy, just come. Um, and also careful how you say it, come and come. Even though he responded better to the baby talk, some people don't like saying baby talk. We just want to be consistent, it makes it easier. I recommend the guardians come up with a list of command words, uh, and then that way uh, we can say vocabulary if we're using the wrong version of the command word. I'd also like to see the guardians take turns, uh, you want to crash? Um, Tra uh, training the dog. So each Sunday or Monday or whatever day of the week, pick one dog or take one dog separately, go to YouTube, find a, tr a trick, teaching them how to roll over, play dead, balance a treat on their nose, shake, dance, whatever it is. And then basically teach the dog to do that separately, then teach the other dog to do that. Then all week long, practice that one trick throughout the week. The next week, the other guardian takes over and they teach the dog a trick. And then you practice that trick all week long. At the end of two months, each guardian has taught four new tricks. Now we, that's a great way to boost a dog's self-esteem. And for him, because he's a little bit insecure, this is gonna help him feel a lot more relaxed and comfortable. And it's gonna reduce the cortisol in his blood, build up his confidence and help uh, his guardians, have him have a deeper relationship with his guardians, but also give the guardians other ways to redirect his attention. We see somebody's gonna come up and deliver a package, we start telling him to roll over or play that now he's preoccupied with doing something else. We can beat him with a punch by the time the UPS guy leaves the package and does a single knock and walks away, he runs over there, well, it's, it's after the fact. Instead of seeing it coming and barking, getting himself worked up. I also went over the uh, maintenance, and I'm gonna get back to petting with a purpose in a sec. Maintenance is basically removing temptation. So this dog likes to go and look out the windows and bark. So we'd like to get some white paper and cover up the windows by the side of the door, windows that look in the backyard, windows by the back door. So that way, if he goes to look to patrol visually, he can't see anything. And it takes about a month for him to develop new narrow pathways. And so about, after about a month, he'll, he'll get out of the habit of checking in. But he probably goes and checks in on patrol several times a day. Um, okay, so um, uh, remember say vocabulary, if somebody's using a wrong version of the word, come up with a list of the command words, put them on the refrigerator. And then uh, say vocabulary if we use the wrong word, just to make it easier for him. Now, petting with a purpose, uh, getting back to that is, again, if the dog is initiating contact, I'm not gonna pet him, I'm gonna give him a counter order. As soon as he sits, pet him up under his chin, say just the command word, sit. 
If he's already sitting, ask him to sit over here or ask him to lie down. He just has to do something to change his state. After a while, he's gonna start uh, prepaying, coming sitting down in front of you to ask for attention. That's a beautiful thing. Make sure we recognize and reward that. Now I have a couple watchwords for these. I say paycheck if I suspect somebody might be petting without a purpose. I say testify if somebody missed an opportunity to pet a dog for a desired action or behavior. Vocabulary would mean that you're using the wrong word, uh, wrong version of the word. Um, okay, um, the other thing that I went over is what I call passive training. Passive training is waiting for the dog to do something voluntarily on their own and simply rewarding them within that three second window. So every time your dog comes to you, pet, you, pet the dog and say, come. Every time it lays down, pet it and say, crash or whatever your word is. Every time she chortles, maybe you say chortle. Every time he grumbles, you say grumble or sing. And eventually, it is a slower way of training, but eventually you can say sing and you'll go, oh, 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 oh. right? We also went over the importance of rules and structure. Dogs kind of go through life probing to determine where boundaries and limits are, but also determine who are the leaders, who are the followers. The leaders are who the people who are enforcing the rules. So if we're not, and they learn through consistency, repetition, and good timing. Like I said, you have three seconds to correct or reward your dog. So if we don't have any rules, we can't be consistent, we can't be repeating anything uh, with regularity, and our timing's gonna not fall in that three second window. So uh, the rules, some of the rules I suggested, no furniture, not really a problem for him, he doesn't really get up that much anyways. Um, not be, having to sit before I let him enter out of the door. No more giving him treats when the humans are eating at the table because he shouldn't be within seven feet of anyone who's eating food. He shouldn't be in the kitchen when we're preparing food. Um, uh, don't let him race up and down the stairs ahead of you. When you're feeding them, I would feed them in structured order. I'd have the humans eat something first. Then Daisy gets fed, and when Daisy's eating, he's not allowed within seven feet of her. When she gets done, she walks away. Then he comes up, and we get, let him eat. And then when he's done, if there's any remaining food, we dump food out of both bowls. Actually, as soon as the dog walks away, if Daisy walks away with food in her bowl, dump it so he doesn't come and eat it. And then make sure you leave the bowls on the ground. I want them to see the bowls are empty throughout the day. That way, when there is food, it's much more valuable. Um, now, I also went over desensitizing the dog uh, and uh, using counter conditioning. If you want to use counter conditioning uh, or want an example of that for if he still has problems with the pool table, the balls hitting each other, or the doorbell, or knocking at the door, let me know and I can share a video about counter conditioning. Since they do get reactive when people come and knock at the door, I want to recommend that the guardians every once in a while just go and then just go back to watching TV. So every once in a while the dog hears that, or if you're out and about, um, problem is you can you have windows through your door, but if you could, if your doorbell is a trigger as well, somebody can kind of like sneak over there and ring it and then just walk away. And so the dog goes over there, there's nobody comes through. So now the doorbell doesn't always represent somebody's coming into the house. Um, breaking these uh, habits and, uh, through practicing and then desensitizing helps dogs a lot. Now for the leashing process, the dog gets very excited for uh, getting leashed up. So I went through the procedure of not narrating number one and then breaking down that activity in individual steps. So the first step is walking to the area where the leash is. The dog walks in front, you turn and walk away. Once you can get all the way there, then you tell the dog to come and sit. And once the dog sits, then you start reaching for the leash. Don't even pick it, don't even touch it. Reach just a couple inches and then pull your arm back. If he stays seated, then reach a couple more inches. Keep going back and forth. And as soon as he gets up, stop, tell him to sit. He has three seconds to sit. If he doesn't sit, then walk away and practice some other time. And after a while, he'll start staying seated because you're not actually grabbing it. We don't always go through the, with the actual walk when we do this. And remember to practice this at times that you're not planning on taking him for a walk to desensitize him even more. Eventually, you'll be able to go in there, pick up the leash, or go in there, tell him to sit first, then to pick up the leash, attach it, and walk to the door, and his energy is going to be nice and calm. Now, I went over a bunch of tips and tricks about uh, stopping, dog, uh, stopping Gunther from barking at the dogs outside and other reasons. Uh, as well as some tips about coming in the video above this. Uh, but one of the things, uh, the other main problem the Guardian wants to work on, we didn't have a guest here other than me, he warmed up to me pretty well because I used a lot of uh, dog behaviors tricks and I'm gonna cover some of those now. Um, so, uh, and the more that we enforce rules and boundaries, the more that he feels more like a follower, the less he feels like in charge of things, we will reduce the cortisol in his blood, which will make it easier for him to be amicable and not feel so stressed out and twitchy all the time. He probably is pretty twitchy a lot. Uh, and that's cortisol in his blood. The more that he identifies the humans as being authority figures through their actions and enforcing rules and petting with a purpose and passive training, the more he's gonna adopt a follower's mindset that it's not my responsibility to be who's at the door. But when we do have guests come over, again, like I talked about earlier, we can put him in a position to succeed by exercising a little bit before the guests come over. Just make sure he has at least 20 minutes before you end the exercise and the guests come, a little bit more if it's a really hot day so he gets to calm down and come back to balance. Uh, but if we're gonna have a, uh, a card party or something like that, 
throughout the day, maybe he gets a couple extra walks, a couple up and down the stairs. We wanna put him in position to succeed by depleting that energy throughout the day. Dog sleeps 17 hours a day. So if we walk, you know, getting him exercise throughout the day, he's like, I gotta catch up on sleep. You guys do your thing, word with friends, I'm gonna go over here and catch some Z's. Now what we can do is for dogs, um, he's also afraid of thunderstorms, so I recommend the guardians go out for like a 20 or 30 minute walk in the thunderstorms. And no, you don't have to wake up at three in the morning to do it, do it when it rains in normal time. Uh, or time that's convenient for you. Um, but what I would recommend you do is when the guests come over, have them text you when, they, uh, when they're on, uh, like a couple blocks away. Put them on a leash, which you've now already con conditioned him to be calm on a leash, and a straight leash, not a, the retractable leash. And I would use a martingale or a, a no-slip collar so we make sure he doesn't sleep, skip away. What we would do is when the guests come over, we're gonna go for a little bit of a mini walk with Gunther. For dogs, moving forward is how they get over things. So if we incorporate a walk, well, first of all, he likes to walk, so it's a positive reinforcer. It helps the dogs to get over things, which is another benefit. When we're outside, everything is not as amplified. Inside, the dog doesn't have as many escape routes, so everything is heightened. When I do it outside, I can run any number of directions. Additionally, we have a plethora of sights, sounds, and smells that are a nice distraction for the dog. So he's not just focused on one thing, because there's other dog over there, there's, there's poop that I gotta sniff on, I gotta pee on that shrub. I got, I got a lot of things going on in my mind right now. I can't focus on one thing. So we go for a walk, and it doesn't have to be a marathon walk because there's not a hard, you know a really super duper high energy breed. So we uh, basically I would have the guardians walk, and and what you want to do is kind of walk in this sort of formation, formation, kind of a triangular. So I have the guardian with the dog here, with the dog in the inside, and the dog should not be in front; should be next to. The guardians might need to have us come back and show the dogs how to walk in a heel position. But the, the other person's gonna be walking, maybe you're walk, maybe the person's in the street and you're walking the sidewalk and you're walking kind of parallel, but eventually you wanna have that person start closing the gap gradually, very progressively. And eventually you're both walking the sidewalk with the dog between you. What we wanna do then is eventually work our way up to the point where the dog's not pulling a leash, it's nice and relaxed. That's why we don't use the retractable. We're gonna keep it nice and relaxed. Dogs, if you're putting attention on a leash, they get, can interpret that as stress or anxiety from you and amplify it. So as soon as the dog is nice and relaxed, you just very quietly hand the leash to the, your guest, and then your guest is holding the leash, your dog doesn't even realize it. Then you have your dog keep on walking and take about another five, 10, 15 steps. But sometimes when your dog is not paying attention to you, just silently stop and let the guest continue walking your dog. Let the guest go to the end of the block, or you know, however long, it doesn't have to be that long, maybe around the block, just the end of the block, turn around and come back. Once you stop and the dog's about 20 paces away, then turn around and go back home. Um, again, make sure that you're using equipment so the dog can't freak out and panic. But now the dog is having a one-on-one -on -one experience with the human. Most of us try to show a dog, I'm a good person by petting him. Well, I think you're creepy. I'm thinking you're creepy. You touching me is gonna make me think you're a whole lot more creepy. We want the guests to build, uh, to earn trust in the dog's eyes. And the best way to do that is by showing the dog respect. If there's a woman that I'm working with and she's going like this with her neck all day long, and I just go and give her a neck massage because I assume her neck's wrong, that's wrong for me to do because I didn't show her respect by asking her, especially if I'm her boss. Now, if I ask her, you have a stiff neck, you want a neck massage? She might say, I've been doing this all day, of course, please. That's showing respect for her. Showing respect and earning the dog's respect by being around it and not petting it, not talking to it, not trying to touch it, not looking at it, direct eye contact may be a challenge for some dogs. Now that you know, I met this person in an outdoor environment, there were a lot of distractions. We went for a walk together. When we came back from the walk, he still didn't touch me anywhere inappropriately or anywhere else. And then when they come in, keep, have the person keep the dog on a leash and just wait for Gunther to sit or lie down preferably, but at least sit down before they drop the leash. But if Gunther is like sitting way over here, we don't have a tense leash. So I try not to let him have tension on the leash. Sometimes I, I put it under my foot so the guests can kind of talk and be free to uh, chat with you guys. When Gunther, Gunther sits down, he's gonna sit as far away as the leash is. So if I'm, this is the foot that's on the leash, I would slide it and the leash towards Gunther to take that tension off. And then once Gunther lays down and he's nice and relaxed, then the guests can very subtly take their foot off of the leash. The dog's now free to walk around unabated, uh, but he'll be dragging the leash, which I talked to the guardians off camera, is dangerous unless it's supervised. In this case, he's in the room. But we want him to learn to practice being around. The meeting is outside. Then we come inside, the person's still not touching me, and I'm able to lead the person as soon as I com uh, demonstrate completely calm and relaxed energy, which is sitting or lying down. As soon as I do this, now suddenly freedom comes, but he doesn't know it. It might be 10 minutes later, and gets up and walks away. Now he's practicing being next to the human, and the human's not touching him or doing anything. Now when the humans are doing this, they should avoid big, icon big movements, sudden movements, loud noises. Uh, those things are gonna startle him, and we don't want him to be startled. 
and then eventually let them walk away. Now, if you can, if you have multiple guests, ideal situation is stagger your guests arrival. And just say, I know this is going to seem weird, but can you come by at like 7.15? Can you come by at 7.25? You know, put about 10 minutes in between each guest. So let's, like I said, if you're going to have a lot of guests, don't have them walk around the block. Just walk eight houses back and, you know, just a short walk. Just enough to, to facilitate this. Then they come in, sit down, as soon as Gunther is relaxed, then they can drop the leash. Then they could, you can give them some treats and they could toss treats in as well. When they're going to get up and move around, I would make sure they cough or do something to get Gunther's attention give them a handful of your the tasty treats and then drop a treat as they take every other step so like when this person moves around they're not like doing a funny business actually they're just dropping treats and i love these treats so i actually now love following these people around because they're treat dispensers they're treat delivery people so now we create a positive association. We have a good greeting. We, we put the, set the dog up for a position to succeed by stacking the deck for them. They come back in, we wait for them to relax, and then only then we do we drop the leash. And then we start trying to give them treats. Now at first, and here's another thing. Let's say the dog, once we drop the leash, and he realizes he walks away and then he won't come back to that person. Well, sometimes I have the dog practice approaching and walking away. Give them those treats. Let's say the dog is sitting 15 feet away. I might have the guest throw the treat eight feet in between. So it's right in the middle. And don't encourage the dog, make sure it sees you do it, toss it, and then just ignore. And the dog comes over and, and t gets it and then walks away, then throw it maybe seven feet, then six feet. And if you throw it at six feet and you won't come, then throw one other one at seven feet, those one at seven and six feet. Uh, can I get seven? Well, six is only a little bit of a lean forward. The idea is wanting the dog to practice approaching the person and moving away on their own volition with the person not trying to pet them or do anything towards them and earning the dog's trust through their actions. Um, let me see. Um, anything else I forgot to go over? Make sure the humans are eating something before they feed the dog. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're great dogs. Uh, they're pretty chill. I think for him, he, he, he the Part of the reason why he's reactive in, uh, to strangers is he actually was here during a break-in. And uh, ever since then, he's been a real stranger danger. And a lot of people want to pet the dog to show you I'm a good person. The dog's like, I'm still made up my mind. And again, anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're reinforcing. So the dog's nervous about the guest being here and the guest pets the dog, we're making the dog more nervous. So through following this method, I think that you're gonna notice that your dog's starting to warm up to people faster and faster. And the guest should play kind of a hard to get. I'd like the guardians to do that as well. But try to wait for the dog to come up. Don't try to pet him until the dog comes over. And, and he should come over the first couple of times and sniff you. Just because he comes over, don't reach your, stick your hand out. That will spook the dog. Mm -hmm. Let him come over and sniff you. In some cases, I actually will take the treats and I'll put one right next to my foot and one right on my foot. And then I just sit there and wait. And don't encourage. Let him screw up the courage himself. If he won't come, then put one another foot away. Another foot. Daisy train uh, made a, ch a chain of treats. And it's nothing wrong with a guest coming over and going through this and him not coming over sniff that one time. The next time he comes over, I remember this person. They didn't pet me. They didn't touch me. Did nothing bad happen. But they did take me for a walk. They didn't throw treats. I didn't eat the treats. And if you do throw the treats, the dog won't come. Keep on throwing the treats to the dog. Even if the dog just leans towards the person, that's enough. Next time, lean and one, you know, foot, a little, and another paw, and another paw. And it might take a couple of visits. And some people, the dog might be more reactive to. You have somebody comes over, nice, relaxed energy. They talk kind of mellow like this, and they're kind of move slowly. That's going to be easier for Gunther to come over. But you have somebody else coming over. Hey, Dad, did you see what's going on? And I'm doing, you know, that's really high strung. That's going to be harder for Gunther to deal with. So again, take that into account as well. Um, all right, Gunther. Would you like another treat, buddy? I know somebody else would. Hey, Daisy. Oh, I can't give it to you for doing that. Sit. Sit. Oh, this is one last little thing. I call this light switch on, light switch off. So she came over, I was gonna give her a treat, and then she jumped up. That was when I turned the light switch off by disengaging with her. And I didn't tell her what to do. I gave him a treat because he sat down. And then she got down on her own, and as soon as she did, she got a reward. So if your dog's, you're petting your dog and it starts doing something you don't want and you immediately stop, stopping your action with the dog is a great way of saying I don't like it. And they'll look at repetition and consistency. So it has to be a number of times consistently before they'll get that, they'll figure that out. But if you consistently stop petting the dog as soon as it jumps up and as soon as it sits down, you go pet it again, you'll, it'll be like back and forth, back and forth. But eventually the dog's like, I'm just gonna stay seated here and then just, they'll continue petting me hopefully. And we will as much as we can. All right, uh, this is Daisy, can you see her? And this is Gunther, and they're very cute, and this is their roadmap to success. 
Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.